The latest study from the CDC is, is really quite important. This is a two-year follow-up that's demonstrated that the current prevalence of autism is 1 in 88 children. Two years ago, the report was 1 in 110. So this is a 23% increase of note. 1 in 54 boys across the sites that the CDC surveyed had a diagnosis of autism. These were identified through a number of, of different sources, through, through educational and health records, and really represent very accurate data. Of particular note in this data is the increased recognition of autism in traditionally underserved minorities, children who are Hispanic and African American. This is important because these children um, are underdiagnosed in the community at large. The reason why the numbers have gone, gone up are several fold. One, that we have been, we as pediatricians have been actively screening and looking for children with autism so that earlier and more accurate diagnosis is possible. Two is that both families and educators are more knowledgeable about autism, so the reports that are available for diagnosis and the records may be more accurate. Thirdly, there's the very real possibility that there is an increased prevalence of autism. We know that there are genes, genetic predisposition to the disorder. We also know now through increasing research in the area that there are environmental factors. We don't know what these factors are with any sort of de definitiveness. We know that none of the studies have demonstrated an association with vaccines. However, it is very important that ongoing research look at the causes of autism and studies like the National Children's Study, which will be following children prospectively over many years, will be able to tie, the, tie early events, even prenatal events, with the occurrence of autism later. The Academy of Pediatrics recommends screening for autism at 18 and 24 months of age. And that's when formal screening takes place, but surveillance takes place in an ongoing fashion. Any time that a family or teacher or a physician is concerned, that's the time to get further evaluation because the earlier the identification, the earlier effective treatment can be implemented and the symptoms can be changed. Rochester was not part of the CDC surveillance project, so these numbers don't reflect Rochester or even upstate New York. However, those of us who work with families with autism recognize that there has been an increased rate of referrals, there has been an increased number of diagnoses, and we should be very proud of how we've all worked together, how families have worked through advocacy channels to get resources, how school districts have worked to improve services, how early intervention has coordinated with screening and provision of effective early treatment. And certainly I you know, am very grateful to my colleagues here at the Golisano Children's Hospital for the hard work and the research that's being done around screening and effective treatment. The pediatricians in this community have really stepped to the plate for early screening and early diagnosis. We have a substantially younger population at diagnosis than other parts of the country. And it's really due to the, the coordination and the team spirit that we have here in Rochester. Now, this doesn't mean that the work is all done. The children have been diagnosed and will continue to be diagnosed, but there's a lot more work to be done.